Good afternoon. Today I had the opportunity to visit the National Safety Council's Opioid Memorial on the Ellipse. It's a moving experience. President Trump and the First Lady encourage you all to visit the memorial before it leaves Washington, D.C. on April 18th. Today, at the Summit of Americas in Lima, Peru, Assistant to the President and Advisor Ivanka Trump oversees private investment corporation and the acting U.S. Secretary of State announced OPIC's two-time America Latin American Women's Initiative, say that fast, which will mobilize $500 million in private capital to invest in projects that empower women in Latin America. This new initiative will break down barriers that limit women's full participation in the economy and reaffirms the Trump administration's commitment to empowering women in Latin America and around the globe. As you all saw, yesterday's confirmation hearing for Secretary of State designee Mike Pompeo went very well. From his years in the Army to his time as a key member of the House Intelligence Committee to his successful tenure as CIA director, Secretary Designee Pompeo has excelled as one of the nation's key leaders in national security and foreign policy. As a result of Mike Pompeo's leadership, America has been safer, more secure, and more prosperous. There is absolutely no legitimate reason that Secretary Designee Pompeo's confirmation process should, be, should not be done in a speedy and bipartisan manner. Even the Washington Post editorial board, hardly a cheerleader for this administration, published an editorial yesterday with a simple, straight-to-the-point headline, Confirm Mike Pompeo. Democrats and Republicans should do exactly that by coming together and doing what is, without question, the right thing for our country. And with that, I will take your questions. Yeah. Cecilia. Thank you, sir. Uh, the President came out swinging today, calling James Comey a liar, a leaker, a slime ball. <laughs> is he worried about what he's saying? Uh, not at all. Uh, the American people see right through the blatant lies of a self-admitted leaker. This is nothing more than a poorly executed PR stunt by Comey to desperately rehabilitate his tattered reputation and enrich his own bank account by peddling a book that belongs in the bargain bin of the fixin' section instead of being remembered as a dedicated servant in the pursuit of justice. Like so many of his other colleagues at the FBI, Comey will for be forever known as a disgraced partisan hack that broke his sacred trust with the President of the United States, the dedicated agents of the FBI, and the American people he vowed to faithfully serve. One of the President's greatest achievements will go down as firing Director James Comey. Topic, quickly, if I may, uh, the Deputy Attorney General was here yesterday. Is the President going to fire Rod Rosenstein? I don't have any announcements at this time. Sarah. The President's uh, voiced some frustrations, but beyond that, I don't have anything to add. John. Uh, Sarah, uh, the President, a short time ago, issued a pardon of Scooter Libby, the uh, former Vice President's Chief of Staff. There are many people who believe that Scooter Libby was the victim of a special counsel investigation run amok. The recent statements that we have heard from the White House would seem to indicate that they, you feel much the same thing about the Mueller investigation. Was the President sending some sort of signal to the Mueller investigation or about the Mueller investigation by pardoning Scooter Libby? Not at all. One thing has nothing to do with the other, and every case should be reviewed on their own merits. Uh, yes. Pardoning Libby uh, was the right thing to do after the principal witness recanted her testimony. The D.C. Court of Appeals panel unanimously voted to restore Mr. Libby's bar membership after being presented credible evidence in support of his version of events, and it appears that that key prosecution witness, Judith Miller, changed her recollection of the events in question. In, in the statement, the pardoning statement today, the President acknowledges he doesn't know Scooter Libby. What was it that convinced him that Scooter Libby deserved a pardon? The President thought it was the right thing to do. Justin. Thanks, Sarah. I two things I wanted to ask about. The first, um, the president at the beginning of the week said he expected a decision. Sorry, can you speak up a little? Sure. The president at the beginning of the week said he expected a decision within 24 to 48 hours on Syria. On Tuesday, he said a decision would probably come that night. Uh, but here we are on Friday. Um, and in a statement last night, you said that uh, no final decision had been reached. So I'm wondering if you could walk through um, why the president hasn't met his own timeline there, and specifically, that had anything to do with the sort of Syrian troop movement that we saw after his tweet on Wednesday sort of threatening a missile strike? No, we're continuing to have ongoing conversations uh, with our partners and allies. The President spoke with President Macron of France again earlier today. Uh, we're continuing to have ongoing meetings and conversations here at the White House, and when we have any further developments, we'll let you know. And then, um, because it's Friday, uh, I'm wondering if... Friday the 13th. 
Yeah. Walk us through exactly what the present. You guys all grown like that's a bad thing. <laughs> um, committed to Senator Gardner uh, in terms of both what the Justice Department would do and what the White House would do in terms of supporting legislation on uh, states that legalize marijuana. Uh, I can confirm the President did speak with Senator Gardner yesterday and again today. Uh, we're always consulting Congress about issues including states' rights, of which the President is a firm believer, and the statement that the Senator put out earlier today is accurate. Steve. You mentioned you've spoken to President Macron. How big a coalition is, does he have for this uh, expected action in Syria? Again, I can't talk about uh, anything that may or may not happen, but I can tell you that the President and a number of individuals within his administration have spoken to a number of our partners and allies at various levels across the world. Is he satisfied now that Syria was responsible for the chemical weapons attack? Uh, yes, we're again confident uh, that both Syria had uh, responsibility in this chemical weapons attack, but we also hold Russia responsible for their failure to stop chemical weapons attacks from taking place. Josh. Uh, it was reported today uh, that uh, Michael Cohen, the president's personal attorney, helped negotiate a $1.6 million settlement uh, to uh, a Playboy Playmate. Uh, it also emerged today that Michael Cohen is under criminal investigation by the Southern District of New York. Uh, is the president uh, still associated with Michael Cohen? Is he uh, continue to consider Michael Cohen someone he holds in confidence? Uh, I know that the president has worked with him as a personal attorney. Beyond that, I, I, I don't have anything else to add about the about these developments. So the president like to say anything about them? Look, the president's been clear that he has a deep concern about the direction the special counsel has taken. The investigation started as Russia collusion, of which there was none. The president has spoken on this topic at length, and I'd refer you back to those comments. What about Michael Cohen's actions? Though? Does the president have any concerns with those? Again, uh, I would refer you to Michael Cohen's personal attorney. This simply reports right now, but I can't get anything beyond that. Jill. I follow up on that and then another topic. Um, is Cohen still the president's personal attorney? Uh, I'm not sure, Jill. I'd have to check. I wanted to ask. I'll only speak about White House staff. Paul Ryan uh, just endorsed Kevin McCarthy for speaker um, in a, an appearance or an interview um, with Meet the Press. Does the president believe that McCarthy should be the next speaker? Uh, the president has a great relationship with Kevin McCarthy, but in terms of uh, an announcement about who he wants to see as the next speaker, I don't have any announcements on that front. John. Yeah. Uh, the James Comey book, some ex excerpts came out today. Uh, he speaks of the president, uh, writes about the president in very personal terms. Were you surprised by that, but was the president surprised by that? Uh, I don't think we're surprised by the fact that uh, James Comey continues to uh, spread false information. Uh, the guy's known to be a liar and a leaker, and so there's not a lot about James Comey that we would find to be very surprising. Steve, just really quickly on the pardon uh, that came out today for Speaker Libby, the president so far in his time in office has issued three presidential pardons. One of those was to Joe Arpaio. Is there a commonality in terms of what the president looks for? Uh, when he pardons individuals? Uh, again, every case should be reviewed on their own merits, and that's what the president has done in each of those. See. Yes, uh, Sarah, I'm wondering if the administration uh, has uh, reacted uh, with any message to Moscow after officials there today said that the uh, chemical attack in Duma was faked and staged with Britain's direct involvement. Uh, certainly, our intelligence tells us otherwise. I can't go beyond that, but again, we have a very uh, high confidence that Syria was responsible, and once again, uh, Russia, Russia's failure to stop them and um, their continued uh, disaction on this front has been part of the problem. April. Sarah, what part does uh, the President bring Russia into the Syria equation now uh, cause for the delay in the strike timeline? Uh, again, we are continuing to have ongoing conversations with partners and allies, assess the information, and once a decision is made, we'll let you know. Dave. Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, the Justice Department Inspector General came out with his long-awaited report this afternoon on former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe saying that he improperly leaked information about the Clinton Foundation investigation to a reporter and then lied to James Comey about it and under oath to two uh, FBI investigators. Do you have a reaction to that? And does that, in your mind, validate the decision to fire McCabe? Uh, I haven't seen the full report, but it sounds like two peas in the pod with uh, McCabe and Comey. McCabe was fired in disgrace for misconduct and lying about it. Beyond that, I don't have anything at this point. Francesca. 
Thank you, Sarah. You said that um, that James Comey was a liar, that he's a leaker, that he made false representations or claims. Other than what the president tweeted this morning about lying under oath to Senator Grassley, what exactly has he said that's false or a lie? Uh, Comey claimed reopening the Clinton investigation when he did was based on merit. Now he says it was based because of poll numbers. Comey claimed the president told him to stop investigating Flynn after he previously testified that no one told him to stop investigations. Uh, he also, even the media has reported that officials have determined that Comey leaked four memos, at least four that we know about with classified information. I think it's very clear that Comey has a credibility problem. The other thing is clear, this is one of the few issues in Washington that both Democrats and Republicans agree on. He's been criticized by the legal community for leaking sensitive information and organizations promoting good government found Comey's leaking grounds for firing. Multiple Democrats, including some of the biggest leaders uh, in the Democrat Party, have also attacked Comey. Minority Leader Pelosi said Comey was maybe not in the right job. Senator Schumer said he was appalled by what Comey did and did not have confidence in him any longer. Senator Bernie Sanders said Comey acted in an outrageous way. Clinton's running mate, Senator Kane, said Comey is responsible for the lowest moment in the history of the FBI. Even Congresswoman Maxine Waters said Comey has no credibility. The FBI should be independent and not led by a political hack. Comey's higher loyalty is pretty clear that it's only to himself. If you can get this group of people and others like Mark Meadows and a number of others to agree on something, I think that you'd have to be right. Sarah, Jim? what about the dossier, yeah. though? Sarah, what about the dossier? Did he also lie about the dossier and his conversation with President Trump about that? The dossier is false opposition research that was funded by the Clinton campaign to attack the president. It was used illegally to justify spying on Americans. And I think that's quite the problem. Jim? Sarah, what about I guess, the, the content of the president's attacks on uh, Jim Comey, your, your attacks on Jim Comey? Isn't all of that a bit unbecoming of uh, the presidency of, of this White House to go after him in such a personal way like that? Uh, I think it. A liar and a leaker. I think it's unbecoming for the person that is supposed to be the top law enforcement official in the United States, the person that is supposed to protect the people of this country, uh, to lie and leak classified information, uh, certainly to falsify documents. I think that's a very big problem. And somebody who has created this problem for himself, uh, I didn't encourage Jim Comey to go out and do a PR campaign. Congress has asked Jim Comey to come and testify multiple times of which he's denied being able to do, yet he found time to sit down with George Stephanopoulos for five hours. I think if anybody has created this problem, it's Jim Comey, and he should be the one held responsible. Other folks got two questions. If I just ask a, a sure. second follow-up question, because because it's Friday. Well, it's Friday, yeah. And you probably and you'd probably get really upset. And I don't no, need that no, if I did. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> no, but you've probably seen this tweet. It was, it was a tweet that you uh, posted. Uh, before the election uh, in 2016 when you're attacking FBI agents because you're under criminal investigation, you're, you're losing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what do you make of that now? I mean, isn't the that... The rank and file FBI are some of the greatest people in this country. Uh, we've repeated that time and time again and certainly have the full support of this administration. I think that we've been very clear, though, how we feel about some of the leadership at the FBI, particularly James Comey. Well, when you go after, go when you go after Comey and I Rosenstein you two, and Jim. Mueller, doesn't moving. that mean you're losing? Following up on that, I mean, one of the themes of Comey's book is the president's, quote, disdain for the rule of law and his continued efforts to publicly undermine federal law enforcement officials. So how would you characterize the president's attitude towards the rule of law and things that he says publicly about many of his top federal law enforcement officials. The president has a great deal of respect for the rule of law, uh, but the president does not have a lot of respect for people whose sole job is to carry out the law, and they leak classified information, and they lie to the American public about it. Yeah. Charlie? It's, leaders, it's his own attorney you, general, it's his own deputy attorney general, it's special counsel, it's the FBI, it's judges who make decisions that he doesn't like. I, I'm sorry, I'm not... What was Those the are the whole list of the sort of federal law enforcement officials that he has undermined. It's not just people who have proven to leak information. The president hasn't undermined them. 
uh, in any capacity just because he calls out things that uh, he finds to be problematic or concerning. I think that he should do that. If members of the FBI are leaking classified information, the president should absolutely call that to question. You guys spend hours upon hours every single day praising Jim Comey, propping him up, giving him the biggest platform. We shouldn't be praising him. We should be putting him down. We should be taking him off of air instead of giving him minute after minute. This country has a lot of real problems. We should be talking about the economy. We should talk about Syria. We should talk about the drug crisis, but instead we're going to talk about Jim Comey. You guys will cover it endlessly all day today, all day tomorrow, and my guess is every day next week with very little time given to the issues that people care about. So the president has every right to call out that individual that you guys are propping up and say that there are problems and that we should be concerned about it. Charlie? Thank you, sir. Um, this morning, James Comey admitted that he didn't tell the president about the political forces. I'm sorry, can you speak up? This morning, James Comey said that he didn't inform the president of the political source of the dossier. Was the president surprised to hear that? Did, did, the, did Director Comey ever tell him about the sourcing of the political dossier against him? Uh, I'm not sure about that specific conversation, but I know that it's been uh, documented uh, many times over now that the dossier is false opposition research funded by the Clinton campaign and used to the attack the president. I think the question because it's Friday. Uh, did the president speak to former Vice President yeah. Dick Cheney about the Scooter Libby pardon either before or after? It I'm not aware of any conversations on Sarah. that. John. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Three Republican state senators from Missouri wrote the president yesterday saying that the embattled governor Eric Greitens should resign from office. He has serious charges of sexual abuse against him, faces impeachment, and refuses to resign. They concluded that as a former Navy SEAL, he would salute and resign if his commander-in-chief asked him to. Did the president receive the letter? What is his response? And will he ask Governor Greitens to step down? I don't have an official response at this time, but certainly uh, something that is very concerning and something that we're taking very seriously. And I'll keep you updated as we have something. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so concerning the uh, summit with Prime Minister Abe next week in Florida, um, does the president plan to push for a bilateral free trade agreement with Japan? Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of the president's uh, conversations with Prime Minister Abe, uh, but trade will certainly be something that is discussed, as well as uh, the ongoing conversations around North Korea. Sarah, um, does the president um, sorry, have another Aisha. NSC meeting today on Syria? I'm sorry? Will the president be having another NSC meeting today on Syria? There is another uh, national security meeting uh, later this afternoon at the deputies level. Aisha? The, the pardoning process. It seems like we've had these three pardons. They all were somewhat high profile or had gotten media attention. How is the president deciding when to take action on a case? I mean, with Arpaio, it hadn't, he hadn't even been sentenced yet. The, the Scooter Libby case was very old. So, and so how, how are you deciding when to take action on these cases? And can a normal person who feels like they've been like unjustly convicted, can they get their case to the to the White House. I mean, there's a Justice Department pr uh, process, but it seems like the president is taking special interest in certain cases. Uh, again, the president has uh, exercised constitutional authority, and he determines uh, when and how he's going to use that when it comes to the pardon process. Uh, he looks at each one individually and makes a decision, and we make that announcement. Sarah. Nadia. Sarah. Thanks, Nadia. Sarah. Who are you calling, Brian? I was sorry, I was calling Nadia, and then I'll go to Brian. Oh, all right. Thank you, Sarah. Um, the OCPW is sending an inspectors to Syria. Do you think this is a futile exercise since you already have the evidence that actually they have chemical weapons? Uh, once again, we are confident in the intelligence that we have uh, and in the fact that we know that Syria is responsible for these actions. I'll take one last question, Brian. Thanks, Sarah. I'll, I'll do two, uh, one on Syria and one on uh, uh, the Department of Justice. On Syria, the president has publicly said that he wants to get out of Syria. Has this strike changed his mind on that? And is he considering other options other than a plan to uh, pull out U.S. forces from Syria? And if you could just answer that. I'm sorry, what was the last is part? He, is he considering uh, other options other than um, 
a long-term strategy to get out get U.S. forces. I don't have any additional uh, changes to policy in Syria at this time. And in terms of options, all of our options are on the table, and we're continuing to look at those, and we'll make an announcement then. And so I have a question about the Department of Justice. Uh, what does the president have to say to Republican lawmakers who believe that um, firing Mueller would be suicide, as uh, Grassley has said? Or firing Rosenstein could mean the end of uh, the president's the presidency for Donald Trump, as uh, Lindsey Graham has said. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into hypothetical situations. The president's taken no action on that front, and I'm not going to get into back and forth on a hypothetical. Lots for Republican lawmakers who are counseling him not to take an action like that? Uh, as with a number of issues, the president uh, talks to a lot of different lawmakers on a number of topics. He's going to continue uh, consulting with them, not just on this, but on some very big issues that our country is facing, and that's what his focus is actually on. Thanks so much, guys. Happy Friday.